And this is another episode of, I'm finally getting a name for this, My Video Game Library. How original, right? Yeah, I got tired of calling it a series without a name, so that's what I'm calling it for now. Until, of course, I come up with a better name. So, what have I gotten this week? Well, actually, I've gotten quite a few things. Number one just came out today. Well, I guess it would be yesterday. But... Super Metroid was just released for Wii U Virtual Console. I'm now actually playing this game in full 1080p. Who would have known that Super Nintendo games would look so good stretched out? Yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. And also, I got a couple more games and systems today. Not today, but throughout the week. One of them is probably one of my biggest purchases in a while. An Xbox 360 Arcade with a bunch of games. Right now I'm playing through Halo Reach. I've got about halfway through and I have to say it's pretty fun. I don't understand what all the fuss is about about it. You know, it's kind of, eh. Uh, don't really understand it much. Of course, maybe it's because I didn't start way back when. Anyway, I also got a few N64 games. Salvation Army was giving them out uh, for pretty cheap. I don't really know any of the games though, so. More of just an impulse buy. I thought I might as well try it. Anyway, so, I guess first thing on the list is, what game am I doing? Well, I'm doing a game that I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time. Specifically, I've been wanting to talk about further on in the game, but the problem is people that I know have not beaten it yet, or are refusing to play it. I bet you anything, if he was watching, he knows exactly what game I'm talking about. Xenoblade Chronicles. This game is by far one of the best games I've ever played. When you pre-ordered it, it came with a special art book. Really well put together. And, well, really pretty art book. The art style in this game is absolutely beautiful. I'll show you guys what it actually looks like, because it's all up here in the art book. But, I mean, look. Look at this. I mean, seriously, the, and it's like, you know what, this is pretty much what you're seeing in-game. I mean, not as good-looking, obviously, but they translated the artwork to the game perfectly. I mean, it's a perfect match, which, I mean, is, is awesome. The art style in this game, the art direction, is just amazing. <laughs> I mean... It's not the greatest looking game, technically wise. Technical wise, it's actually comparable to like mid PS2. You know, like, eh. You know, because like when you see like their faces, the textures are just kind of blotchy, you know. Everything else just looks kind of blah. But, the art design actually makes up for that and more. <laughs> um, there are very ingenious tricks and designs used. For example, of course, the obvious is, hey, let's use sprites for the leaves and the grass, so whenever you turn, they follow your camera, kind of thing. But then also, there's little to no loading time in this game. I, you can literally go and walk and walk and walk, and you'll notice, okay, there's some billboarding, but then you get closer, look, I haven't reached the loading point yet, and it looks better as I'm getting closer to it. It actively loads newer models and newer textures to really bring up stuff. And so I'm like, okay, this is cool. And then there's also some really interesting uses of skyboxing, which I really can't talk about right now unless I want to spoil the ending for some of you guys. But it's definitely a pretty interesting thing, especially when you, especially when you get near the last major plot twist. That actually brings me on to the story. Probably one of the best JRPG stories I've ever seen. Actually, one of the best stories I've seen in gaming. <sighs> Literally. This, basically, the story is, okay, there are two titans fighting each other. One that's based on life, one that's based on mechanical. They're fighting each other, they eventually just land two fatal blows, killing each other, and now 
life is spawned on both. One mechanical, one, you know, like us. Well, they're continuing the fight. And, you know, this has been going on for ages and ages and ages and ages. And it's just, you know, kind of turned into this conflict. Well, the people of Bionis, the living, have a weapon that hurts the people of Mechanis. The, me the mechanical one, obviously. You know, bio, bionis, yeah. So, they have a thing called the Monado. It's literally a weapon that can bend space and time. And I'm not joking when I say that. It can bend space and time. So, it can slice through the mechon like butter. So, I'm like, okay, this seems like a fairly, you know, okay plot, okay, there's been fighting going on, you know, life versus mechanical, while this hasn't been done before. Well, I guess in that sense, you're actually playing on these two dead titans, and it's just like, okay, how many games can you say, oh yeah, I just I just got to the, uh, to the kneecap, and I'm working my way up the spine. How many games can you actually say that? <laughs> but, um, it's just like, so you start playing a little bit longer, and I'm like, okay, oh shoot, these things are attacking here, okay. Um, oof, that, oh, I didn't want them to kill off that character, no. You quickly become emotionally attached to characters in this game, I noticed. Because they set you into the average day life, normally. So you're like, okay, so this is average, this is what normal day stuff is like. And then you're thrown into a situation where these characters have to go and fight. And then, from there, you keep on going, hints to a plot twist, all the way through. Major plot twist. At this point, you're about 40 hours into the game, and through there you're having mini stories throughout the way. And so it's just like, you hit that first major plot test, and you're just like... I, 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 I kind of expected this, but still. Then right after that plot twist, you go a little bit further. Another plot twist, again, it's another expected plot twist, but... It was just done really cool. And then you continue going. There's another plot twist, and you're just like, wait a minute. Okay, this is starting to get kind of interesting. Huh. Okay. And then you get to travel on the Makanas. And you're like, okay. You get to the capital and you're like, oh, sweet, look at this place. Oh, this is so cool. Oh. Okay. So I... Okay, you're going to tell me something. What? They flipped the story around. <laughs> they totally flipped it up on its head. And then you're just like, okay, well, I still had to take out this main antagonist. So you do. Plot twist! Now there's a new main antagonist, and it's a complete, oh my gosh moment. I was just completely speechless. And I'm just like, okay. Let me try to wrap my head around this. So that just happened. Hmm. I'm not really sure, and it's kind of confusing, so let's just continue on. Another plot twist, like, right after that, and I'm just like, Stop it, you're hurting my head. And then, you're just like, okay, then there's another, like, little tiny thing in there that's just like, okay, what in the world is going on now? And I'm just like, okay. And then they lead you up to the end. Where it's just like this amazing, amazing boss, three-stage boss fight, where you're just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then you... <laughs> Literally, the, the last ending cutscenes of that fight are the best cutscenes of the game. Do not look them up unless you've beaten the game, because you wouldn't understand a thing. <laughs> so, then they explain why this all happened. Something I never would have thought of. I'm just like... This is the only game that I can say my mind was blown more than three times in the storyline. Because, <laughs> see, I'm not a very subtle person. If you're subtly hinting something at me, I might not get it right away. This game 
it threw hints. Now that I play through it a second time, it really did. It threw hints at me. I just, I didn't see them. So I just went. How did I miss that? <laughs> I have to say though, if you love story based games, this is a game for you. It really is. And this is one of the best parts of it. That's why I've been telling a certain friend of mine to beat it. Yes, name 1000 man, I'm talking about you. Beat the game now, and I will not stop bugging you until you actually beat it. So, <laughs> now, you know, graphics and, you know, story are great, but how's the gameplay? The gameplay in this game is kind I hate to compare it to Final Fantasy XII. I really don't, because it's not. A lot of people say, oh yeah, it's like Final Fantasy XII. Mm -mm. It's a little bit, it looks similar, but it's not. Let's just put it that way. So, essentially, it's a real-time RPG. So, you're actively moving around an enemy, choosing attacks, and that's just how it works. So, this has, this game has an aggro base. So, once one character's aggro raises, the enemies team up on that one character. So, you kind of have to be careful with that, and there are some moves, known as arts in this game, to actually cool down your aggro. So, what happens is you lock onto a target, a circle appears around them, and an arrow will be pointing to a character that they're going after. So, like, let's say I, uh, if I'm playing as one of the characters, Ryan. Okay, well, you know, this character here is getting pretty beat up, and your shoes about to die. So, let's just go and boost my aggro. Well, I boost my aggro to, t to team them up all on me, because my guy's like a tank. I can take the abuse. That's just how it all works, and it works pretty well. Now, the thing is the arts. They all have arts that are going to appear on the bottom of the screen, and they all do various things. They can stall, they can cause status problems, they can do extra damage depending on your positioning around the enemy, etc, etc. So, like, let's say, um, Air Slash from Shulk can break an enemy, which essentially leaves them vulnerable to what's known as topple which you can actually topple an enemy and make them fall to the ground. You can only damage some enemies when they're toppled. And then when they're toppled, you have access to daze them and stun them for a little bit. So, you know, it all works pretty well. And, you know, then you have... Like, for me, I have, uh, as I play Shulk, I get the Monado Arts, as my guy uses the Monado. I then can use Monado Enchant, Monado Buster, Monado Purge, all these other really neat arts that have different effects. Of course, these only can be used when the gauge is full, and the gauge fills up by using auto attacks. So, I mean, it can seem pretty complicated at first, but after you get used to it, it's actually a really nice system. And the cool thing about this system is that it keeps on adding to it. For example, first time I could just sit there and I could just poke, 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 and I just attack an enemy as much as I want. But then after you get past a certain spot, you get what's known as spike damage. Let's say if I use an art that does, let's say, 500 damage, I get 200 damage back. But then, of course, I can boost my spike damage ratio, so whenever they attack me, they get damage back. So you have to be careful. But then, of course, you can always get, like, these gems that you can make that you can equip to your character that will boost stats and lower stats and... You know, you have to actually find the stuff to build these crystals yourself, and then there's always this luck and chance involved. It's a very <laughs> complicated game, but it's really well worth it when you get into it. And then, you know, on top of that, you have your equipment, you have this, you have that. It's just, wow. But, of course, the one really cool thing about the battle system actually ties in with the story. See, one of the Monado's biggest features is that it can show Shulk visions of the future. So, for example, let's say my buddy Ryan here is about to bite the dust. About 10 seconds before, Shulk will have a vision of that happening. It'll show which enemy is doing it, the attack he's going to use, who it's going to affect, and how much damage it's going to do. So, it's really neat because I can just sit there and like, okay, I'm going to go break this enemy, 
top limb and daze him. That will stop that attack from initiating. So that'll give me more time, or that could actually change the enemy's mind completely. Or I want to boost my aggro so he doesn't attack him, he attacks me, because I know I can survive that hit. So it's very tactical. You have to actually think when playing. It's really, really neat, for sure, because it's just, it's so complicated, yet it's so simple. It's really neat. And I'm probably more confusing when talking about it, so you guys actually have to try it yourself to really see if you, uh, if you can really get into it. Another thing that's really cool is just the game, it's like, here's most games learning curve, right? It's either like this, or like this. This one looks like this. This is one of the best learning curves I've ever seen. Perfect. Hands down. Now I have another game here that I can compare it to. Final Fantasy XII. This is everything that this game is not. Final Fantasy XII. Oh, hey. Okay, here's the first... I have to be 20 levels higher to beat this enemy. And he's essentially just an HP hog. No. In this game, you can be really low level. Depending on how good you are tactically, you can actually take out bigger enemies. It just, it requires a lot of skill, it requires a lot, a lot of thought. But you can. And, the best thing is, you don't have to grind. Yes, a JRPG where you do not have to grind. Sorry about the skip there, my camera decided, hey, let's run out of memory just as I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, okay, I guess it was my fault for not deleting the other videos. Anyway, as I was saying, yes, this is a game that does not require you to grind. You actually have side quests that just are right there, and you get experience, you get better items, and of course, you gain affinity from them. Now, the affinity system actually does involve a lot. You actually get affinity from battling with the same people, you can press B at certain times during fights to boost affinity by having them, you know, like, hey, no problem, I know you missed, it's, it's fine, or, yeah, that was awesome, let's try it again, you know, that kind of thing. So, I mean, yeah, it definitely works. And then as your team works together, and the, as the affinity grows, you can actually do a chain attack, which involves time freezing, and then you have all three party members choose arts. So you can actually strategically do this. As I said in the past, it's like if I see, okay, this enemy is going to kill this guy, chain attack, break, topple, daze. There, that's, that's it. And then sometimes, <clears throat> for instance, if you see, okay, these arts icons are red. Red, 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 red. You can just continue going through here until you run out of reds. Or you can, you know, or you can do a mixture, but, you know, you're, the chain won't last as long if you're using just, you know, different colors. And of course, to connect the attacks, you have to press B at a certain time, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm just going to get off the gameplay because I could talk about the gameplay for a long time. Anyway, so, we have um, the music next. The music in this game has about three different people doing it. And this soundtrack is actually very, very good. Um, it, I think it kind of depends on a person's taste, but I, I love it. I mean, I would go out and buy the soundtrack CD of this. You know, it's, it's a three-disc set. Yeah, three-disc. But it, literally, the music fits every area just perfectly. Everything works together. Perfect. The atmosphere of this game is just... Nailed it. 100% just blew it out of the water. You nailed it, big time. And, of course, scalability, if you guys want to play this in Dolphin. It looks absolutely beautiful in Dolphin. I blew it up to 1080p. There are some sprite-based parts of, like, outfits and stuff like that. Like, if you have your character wearing glasses, they appear really... Ew, 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 ew. But... You know, once you get past that, everything scales beautifully. You know, minus some 
things. But what about the whole picture? This game came out more than a year ago. And I'm still talking about it like I just beat it. When I say a game is great, it doesn't matter how what the poly count is, it doesn't matter how good the music or the gameplay is, or even the story for that matter. A great game for me is a game that impacted me. In a positive way. That I can talk about it for a long time. I mean, there's, there's only a few games up here that I could actually say that about. Xenoblade Chronicles, Metro Prime, the first Metroid, Super Metroid, obviously. Um, Hello. Ooh. Pokemon Sapphire. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, that one's debatable, but I almost cried at the end. Even though I knew what was going to happen, I almost cried. Yeah, that's about it. As you can see, I'm pretty strict on that, but this game, literally... It, it beats Super Metroid on my list. Metro Prime, Xenoblade Chronicles, Super Metroid. To get out my top five favorites, <laughs> it's hard. I would give this game easily a 10 out of 10. I mean, I got it with like expectations here. This is where it ended up. Maybe about here, if you guys want to see it. Here. Yeah. That's... I mean, it's an amazing game. It was limited release, though, so as, as it's kind of hard to find now, because everyone who pre-ordered it wants to keep it. They don't want to sell it. So if you find it at GameStop, anywhere, pick up a copy. I'm already saying, if I find another copy at a garage sale, I'm buying it. No questions, I'm going to pick it up. GameStop, 85 bucks. Not joking. That's where I saw it last. It's exp if you guys are seeing flashing, I'm sorry, that's super metric going on in the background. I'm on top uh, criteria right now, and so you're seeing that lightning. But really, it's it's such a good game. If you guys haven't ever played a JRPG before, if you guys aren't sure about JRPGs, or if you played like Final Fantasy, it's like, eh, I hate J I hate that. Play this game. And what do I think about it? On like a Nintendo point of view. Nintendo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This game is Nintendo first party. For you guys that are saying, ah, oh, but it was made by Monolith Soft. No. Monolith Soft is owned by Nintendo. It's Nintendo first party. Just like Retro Studios made Metro Prime, Metro Prime's first party. We have a sequel coming out. Oh, maybe. We know it's a Xeno game, but we don't know what it's going to be called. We don't know where it takes place in the story. But I assume it's going to be after Xenoblade. If you guys haven't seen the trailer, I'll put a link inside the description for you guys. But I have to say, this is amazing. Nintendo now has a JRPG that blows any Final Fantasy game out of the water. I mean... I, have, I will give it for granted. Final Fantasy did have some really good games at the beginning. Final Fantasy IV, one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, is, is pretty good in my opinion. The Japanese difficulty, of course. You have Final Fantasy VII. I, don't know, I think it's a little bit overrated. 
in my opinion. Final Fantasy X, uh, I didn't really get into it. But, Nintendo, if you play your cards right, you could be the next JRPG leader. Because that is what we've been waiting for. That is what we want. Of course, you guys did limited release GameStop. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And personally, I find this game, get it, no life it, play through again, let it sit. I mean, it's just let it, let the game sit. Don't touch it. Let it sink in. And then really think. You'll start realizing what I'm talking about. You'll get excited. You'll want to see this next. You'll you'll want to see this next game because as you're sitting on that idea, you're sitting on the ideas presented in this game. You're gonna be thinking, what happens next? The story is all about changing your future, going against fate to seize your own destiny. And in the end, they do. But, he was left wide open for another game. And also in the trailer, you see wide open spaces. Hmm. Well, if you guys have actually beaten the game, you'd understand why I'm going, hmm, about that. You know, I didn't see anything above you. Hmm. That kind of stuff, I'm not going to say anything more. But, again, if you guys have beaten the game, you know exactly what I mean. I've rewatched the ending of that game so many times just because I can't get over it. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> this is a good one, guys. I'm telling you, if, if I actually can't stop talking about it, it's a good game. So I need to stop talking about it. <laughs> All right. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you guys are interested, I do have a Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr page set up. And of course, I also have the Metroid fanbase on Google+. If you guys want to check those out, links are into the description. And yeah, you know, this is always a really interesting thing. You know, this whole... I don't know. It's just... I, I can't wait for the next game. For me, that that's why I bought... People are asking me, why did you buy a Wii U? That game. Probably wasn't too good to shake that thing, but... Again, I wanted it because of that game. I knew Monolith Soft was working on something. For the Wii U. So, I went out and bought a Wii U. That was the system seller. After I saw the trailer, validated my reason. And I'm talking about it again! Yes! Alright. <laughs> Buy it. Play it. Beat it. Love it. Please. Damn 1000 Man, beat it. Starting after you watch this video. I will ask you about it. I will. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> well, I guess until next time, this is Sonic6 7539. See you guys later.